welcome to the second uh, midday Advent service. Uh, the order of worship can be found in the bulletin. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We light the second candle on the Advent wreath to celebrate the renewal of our lives through faith in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul writes, We were buried, therefore, with Christ by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. You were born among us to bring us new life. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Renew our hearts and minds in the power of the Holy Spirit so that we might serve you by serving others. confess our sins to God and ask his forgiveness. Almighty God, we confess to you that we do not always live in the newness of life that is ours in Jesus. We fall back into our selfish ways. We do not love others as we should. Instead of following your will, we seek to conform our lives to the world's temptations. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Renew and restore us. 
God had mercy on us and sent his Son to be our Savior. Jesus took our sins onto himself and suffered and died on the cross for us. Therefore, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help us, Lord, to live in newness of life. Lead us to seek your will so that we might do what is good, acceptable and perfect in your sight. Please stand as we sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem. God, when the time was right, you fulfilled your promise and sent your Son to be our Savior. Even his holy name, Jesus, means that he came to save his people from their sins. Through faith in our crucified and risen Lord, we have forgiveness for our sins and the gift of eternal life. We are buried with him in baptism and raised to walk with him in newness of life. Help us in that new life to walk in love as Jesus did and to serve you by serving others. When we grow faint and weary in our walk of faith, lift us up and renew our strength in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Tonight's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Ephesians 1, 
7 through 10. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. of us in whatever place we are in our lives, whatever joys we have, whatever weariness we're feeling, I pray that you would come and, and speak to us your holy gospel, and that as Isaiah says, you would raise us up on, on eagles' wings. Bless the words of my lips, Lord, the meditations of all of our hearts, that tonight through this message, you would be honored and glorified, and we would all be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our text for this evening is from the Old Testament reading. It was read just a couple of minutes ago, Isaiah chapter 40, 
and I would like to read verses 28 through 31 again. Just four short verses, but I want you to listen for the word weary. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is our text, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that I love about Advent and Christmas is the singing of Christmas carols. Not all the songs are, are joyful. Uh, some of the songs uh, talk about how God comes to us in the midst of our weariness, just like Isaiah talks about this evening. In our noonday service, we don't have an organist, we don't have uh, a choir, uh, so we sing the songs a cappella. But the people that come, about as many as you here this evening, know these beautiful hymns, these beautiful carols that we, that we join together and, and sing, praying that God would come to us and fill us with with hope and with peace, with joy, the love, the, the significance of our, of our Advent, Advent wreath, and that he would fill us even in the difficult times of our lives. At the beginning of this sermon, I want to just talk for a moment about a couple of songs that talk about God coming to us in the midst of our weariness, and the first one is, O Holy Night. That was first written in 1843 by a French poet named Placide Capot. And those lyrics were translated into English just a few years later by an American pastor named John Sullivan Dwight. But this carol's initial popularity is often traced to the third stanza, cherished by abolitionists in the United States fighting for the freedom of African American slaves. Lines from that stanza go like this. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall cease. powerful words back a century and a half ago. I hope they're powerful words for you tonight. But I think these days the carol may be appreciated for still another reason, and that is its recognition of a weary world. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. That's what Isaiah is talking about. About a new and glorious morn coming into our weary hearts. But there's another song. It's not just O Holy Night that stands alone in this recognition of a weary world. Edmund Sears, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear that's in our Lutheran service book. It was written just a few years after O Holy Night. It was written in 1849. And in this hymn, he describes the song of the Christmas angels 
floating over a weary world. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. And so with the cue from our carols, let me ask you this tonight. Are you weary? Are you exhausted? Are you feeling fatigued? Will the songs of the angels float over a weary you? Do you find yourself in the middle of in-between? And in the middle of in-between isn't a feeling just like I'm stuck in the middle. It's in the middle of in-between, which means that you are really being pressed hard. You're stuck. Maybe you're even feeling crushed, waiting for resolution and reconciliation, for vindication, or just some kind of a change. But you don't have any change at all in sight. So what has you feeling weary? What are the circumstances in your life? Is it your health? Is it your age? Is it a relationship? Is it your job? Do you feel stretched thin, exhausted, winded from a pace that has you feeling spent physically and emotionally? Have you just about given up hope that we can solve our big problems in this world, in our lives, the pro problems of a bad economy, of inflation, of war, of sickness, of crime, of racism, of immigration, you name it, you know all of those things. But tonight, is it just all too much, this marathon that life has become. There are many ways that we can go when we're wearied in life. But Isaiah counsels us that with the Lord's strength we can soar like an eagle. And when you first read that, especially after talking about weariness at first, you can think, oh, that's kind of pie-in-the-sky stuff. You know, I'm feeling down, I'm sick, I don't have a job, my bank account is empty, and now suddenly I can soar like an eagle. But that's because Isaiah wants to fill us with hope. But oftentimes weary people are a difficult people. We can live with despair, we can complain, and weary people love to blame. If I'm feeling down, if I'm wearied, I'm going to make sure that everybody else around me is feeling the same way. How does that old proverb go? It's hard to soar like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. <laughs> when we get weary, weary, we may not see the needs of others that are around us. When we get really down and weary, we may not even see the opportunities that are right in front of us. I think that in each of us there is a struggle between weariness and being strong in the Lord. It's that uh, it's that sinner saint paradox, simul justus et peccator, that it's simultaneously saint and sinner, justified and sinner. American poet Carl Sandburg is credited with this introspective line that talks about this, this tension when he says that there's an eagle in me that wants to soar, there's also a hippopotamus in me that wants to wallow in the mud. And so this text from Isaiah is for the wallowing hippo in all of us. Not that there are any hippos among us, but there are certainly some of us who at times have wallowed in the mud. And Isaiah is aware of that because he's writing, he's speaking to a weary people. And that's why this text for tonight has weary written all over it. But Isaiah first uses this word to say that God does not faint or grow weary. And that's the good news, that the one, the God in charge of the whole universe does not fatigue in caring for his creation, that he never gets weary in loving you, that he never tires 
of caring for you. That he never wearies in coming to you day after day after day, telling you that you belong to him, that you are his. And he loves you, that he died for you. But no matter what it is in your life, whatever mistakes you've made, whatever messes or you've gotten yourself into, however deep you've wallowed in the mud, the gospel, the good news of a God who never tires comes to you and his love raises you up on wings like an eagle. Isaiah reminds us that God never feels, how was it that Bilbo said it to to Gandalf and in Lord of the Rings, he said, I'm just feeling all thin, sort of stretched like butter that has been scraped over too much bread. I love that line. I'm feeling like butter that has been scraped over too much bread. Well, in fact, God, Isaiah says, gives power to the faint and he increases the strength of those who feel like they have no strength left. In this long history of God and humanity, God has always been strength for the weary. He's been strength for the weary over and over again, a first time, a second time, a third wind for those who are ready to fall. You see what's happening here? Isaiah is writing to a weary people, and he, and he wants to comfort them, and so he speaks words of comfort to a people who are wearied because of their long wait for the Messiah. And they're exhausted. He's speaking to a chosen people who are losing their sense of being chosen, waiting for centuries, even millennia, for the Messiah to be born. But I think it's important to know that Isaiah, in his comfort speech tonight, he doesn't say, be strong, he doesn't say, be courageous. He doesn't say, pull yourself by your, up by your bootstraps. He's not like an NFL line coach shouting, dig deep. Don't go soft on me now, you gutless wonder. That's not Isaiah. That was my high school football coach. <laughs> and it's all law. It's all law. And that is not what Isaiah is saying at all. Isaiah points us to God. He's not telling you be courageous because if you just dig deep enough, you can pull this from within. In fact, he's telling you that in your weariness and your weakness, God comes into your weakness where his strength is made perfect. He lifts up wearied people because of who he is and what he does for us, not because of who we are. We're sinners. And not because of what we can do. It's all because of what God does. And so Isaiah turns us to God who offers this divine strength to replace our weariness. There's this wonderful exchange that I hope some of you here tonight have experienced personally. And that's the exchange of your weakness for the Lord's strength. I hope you've experienced that, to just submit to God's will and his strength and presence and power in your life when you just say, Lord, I can't do it anymore. I give it all up to you. Make your strength perfect in my weakness. I've lost all my courage. Lord, give me your courage so that I can soar on the wings of an eagle. And that's why Isaiah 